institutes. Four Wi-Fi enabled campuses, 8,000 plus students at any given time. The UG Institute was established in 1995 with the mandate of providing management and technical education of the highest quality. To add more fun and enjoyment, Bollywood celebrities, cricketers, bands, singers are invited. ITS, the education group, is increasingly recognized by recruiters as one of the top private institutes in India and to become a center of excellence in value-based management and technical education. The courses offered are BBA, Bachelor of Business Administration, and BCA, Bachelor of Computer Application. These three-year full-time courses aim at inculcating essential skills as demanded by the global software and corporate industry through interactive learning process. Knowledge is power. Join us and experience it. ITS, the education group with 20 educational programs, 8 institutes, 4 Wi-Fi enabled campuses, 8,000 plus students at any given time. The UG Institute was established in 1995 with the mandate of providing management and technical education of the highest quality. To add more fun and enjoyment, Bollywood celebrities, cricketers, bands, singers are invited. ITS, the education group, is increasingly recognized by recruiters as one of the top private institutes in India and to become a center of excellence in value-based management and technical education. The courses offered are BBA, Bachelor of Business Administration, and BCA, Bachelor of Computer Application. These three-year full-time courses aim at inculcating essential skills as demanded by the global software and corporate industry through interactive learning process. Knowledge is power. Join us and experience it. ITS, the education group with 20 educational programs, 8 institutes, 4 Wi-Fi enabled campuses, 8,000 plus students at any given time. The UG Institute was established in 1995 with the mandate of providing management and technical education of the highest quality. To add more fun and enjoyment, Bollywood celebrities, cricketers, bands, singers are invited. ITS, the education group, is increasingly recognized by recruiters as one of the top private institutes in India and to become a center of excellence in value-based management and technical education. The courses offered are BBA, Bachelor of Business Administration, and BCA, Bachelor of Computer Application. These three-year full-time courses aim at inculcating essential skills as demanded by the global software and corporate industry through interactive learning process. Knowledge is power. Join us and experience it. ITS, the education group with 20 educational programs, 8 institutes, 4 Wi-Fi enabled campuses, 8,000 plus students at any given time. The UG Institute was established in 1995 with the mandate of providing management and technical education of the highest quality. To add more fun and enjoyment, Bollywood celebrities, cricketers, bands, singers are invited. ITS, the education group, is increasingly recognized by recruiters as one of the top private institutes in India and to become a center of excellence in value-based management and technical education. The courses offered are BBA, Bachelor of Business Administration, and BCA, Bachelor of Computer Application. These three-year full-time courses aim at inculcating essential skills as demanded by the global software and corporate industry through interactive learning process. Knowledge is power. Join us and experience it. ITS, the education group with 20 educational programs, 8 institutes, 4 Wi-Fi enabled campuses, 8,000 plus students at any given time. The UG Institute was established in 1995 with the mandate of providing management and technical education of the highest quality. To add more fun and enjoyment, Bollywood celebrities, cricketers, bands, singers are invited. ITS, the education group, is increasingly recognized by recruiters as one of the top private institutes in India and to become a center of excellence in value-based management and technical education. The courses offered are BBA, Bachelor of Business Administration, and BCA, Bachelor of Computer Application. These three-year full-time courses 
aim at inculcating essential skills as demanded by the global software and corporate industry through interactive learning process. Knowledge is power. Join us and experience it. ITS, the education group with 20 educational programs, 8 institutes, 4 Wi-Fi enabled campuses, 8,000 plus students at any given time. The UG Institute was established in 1990. Hello? Hello? Students are required to take their seats. We are about to start within 5-7 minutes. All the students are required to take their seats. And keep your mobiles on silent mode. All the students who are standing, they are required to take their seats. We are about to start within 5-7 minutes. Keep your mobiles on silent mode and maintain the decorum of the hall. with the mandate of providing management and technical education of the highest quality to add more fun and enjoyment Bollywood celebrities cricketers bands singers are invited ITS the education group is increasingly recognized by recruiters as one of the top private institutes in India and to become a center of excellence in value-based management and technical education the courses offered are BBA Bachelor of Business Administration and BCA Bachelor of Computer Application these three-year full-time courses aim at inculcating essential skills as demanded by the global software and corporate industry through interactive learning process knowledge is power join us and experience it ITS the education group with 20 educational programs eight institutes Four Wi-Fi enabled campuses, 8,000 plus students at any given time. The UG Institute was established in 1995 with the mandate of providing management and technical education of the highest quality to add more fun and enjoyment. Bollywood celebrities, cricketers, bands, singers are invited. ITS, the education group, is increasingly recognized by recruiters as one of the top private institutes in India and to become a center of excellence in value-based management and technical education. The courses offered are BBA, Bachelor of Business Administration, and BCA, Bachelor of Computer Application. These three-year full-time courses aim at inculcating essential skills as demanded by the global software and corporate industry through interactive learning process. Knowledge is power. Join us and experience it. ITS, the education group with 20 educational programs, 8 institutes, 4 Wi-Fi enabled campuses, 8,000 plus students at any given time. The UG Institute was established in 1995 with the mandate of providing management and technical education of the highest quality to add more fun and enjoyment. Bollywood celebrities, cricketers, bands, singers are invited. ITS, the education group, is increasingly recognized by recruiters as one of the top private institutes in India and to become a center of excellence in value-based management and technical education. The uh, courses equity. offered are BBA. All the dignitaries are required to give the standing ovation to our guests. All the students are required to give the standing ovation to our guests.
All the students are required to maintain the decorum of the hall. Honorable Vice Chairman ITS Education Group, Shreya Pichada, sir. Chief Guest of this inaugural ceremony, Shri Anil Sarubji. Shri Miraj Dube. Director PR ITS Education Group, Shri Surinder Sood, sir. Director IT, Dr. Sunil Kumar Pandey. Guests, delegates, and media person. Good morning. It's my proud privilege to welcome you all in the inaugural ceremony and August gathering of National ICT Summit 2017. ITS Education Group established its first campus at Mohanagar Ghaziabad in 1995 as a NAC accredited A grade institute. The group is committed to its vision to provide quality value based education with a focus on excellence in academics offering 20 undergraduate, postgraduate, and doctoral programs in the field of information technology, management, engineering, dental, pharmacy, and biotechnology through its four campuses at Mohanagar, Muradnagar, Greater Noida, eight institutions with strong base of over 750 committed faculty and about 8,000 students. New India Vision, ICT nation building. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme of this ICT summit. Every country needs a vision statement which stirs their imagination and motivates also segments of society with greater effort. It is an essential step in building a political consciousness on a broad national development strategy. In this summit, we have eminent panel of experts who are leading the country with their vision, thoughts, and guidance. Now, I request and invite Sri Arpichara, Vice Chairman ITS Education Group, Sri Anil Sarubji, Sri Miraj Duveji, Dr. Harish Pansa, Director IT, Dr. Sunil Kumar Pandey, Convener Dr. Umang, to kindly take their seats on the dais. Thank you, sir. Now, request Honorable Vice Chairman ITS Education Group, Shri Arpichada, sir, to welcome our guest, Shri Anil Sarubji, by presenting him a bouquet of flowers. Now, request Honorable Director PR ITS Education Group, Shri Surinder Sood, sir, to welcome our eminent guest, Dr. Harish Pant by presenting him a bouquet of flowers. Now request Director IT. Thank you, sir. Now request Director IT, Dr. Sunil Kumar Pandey, sir, to welcome our eminent guest, Shri Meraj Dubeji, by presenting him a bouquet of flowers. Thank you, sir. To make this day a blessed, we invoke Goddess Saraswati by kindling the lamp of knowledge and wisdom. For seeking the choicest blessings for the same, now request all the dignitaries on the dais to do lamp lighting before Ma Saraswati. I request to Director PR, Dr. Srinda Sutsar.
Now request convener of this summit, Dr. Umang Singh, to brief about the event. Honorable Vice Chairman, ITS Education Group, Shri Arpit Chadha Sir. Today's eminent guest, respected Shri Anil Sarup Sir, Dr. Harish Pan Sir, Shri Mehraz Dubey Sir. Director PR, ITS The Education Group, Shri Surindra Sood Sir. Director IT, Dr. Sunil Kumar Pandey Sir. Vice Principal, UG Campus, Professor Nancy Sharma. Co-conveners of the event, Professor Pooja Ghar, Professor Ismita Kansal. And eminent speakers of today's summit, delegates, faculty colleagues, media persons and dear students. ICT is an important building block for the development and growth of India. In order to achieve the goal and new vision and shift in national India, this one's day summit is planned, which will include discussions, deliberations, and talks by invited eminent speakers from academia, industry, and professional societies like CSI, government organizations, and policy makers. The objective of this ICT summit is to provide a platform to bring professionals from industry, academia and professional societies together to discuss and deliberate on this theme, which is a very important in today's scenario. This will help immensely in strengthen our academia institute industry interface. We are confident that this would be a unique opportunity for all the participants to meet, interact, learn, share and exchange the knowledge and information and shall create avenues for collaborative research in institute. By keeping this view, National ICT Summit on New India Vision ICT in Nation Development is planned. In this event, various activities, paper presentation, poster presentation, digital poster, Quiz competition activities are also planned. In paper presentation activities, original and unpublished quality papers were invited from prospective authors for including in the proceedings of Sonair with ISBN number. All the papers selected, registered and presented in the summit are included in hard copy of the proceedings which will be released shortly in this session. We are pleased to share with you that we have received overwhelmed response for scheduled activities from all the courses of our institute as well as other reputed institutes. We are confident that participation of the students in such activities will strengthen the confidence and skills of young minds which will be helpful in their bright future. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now request Vice Chairman ITS Education Group Shri Arpit Chadha sir to welcome our eminent guest Dr. Kumkum Devan by presenting her a bouquet of flowers. Thank you sir, thank you ma'am. Now request Director IT and Event Chair of this summit Dr. Sunil Kumar Pandey sir for his welcome address. Honorable Vice Chairman, ITS Education Group, Chief Director Dasar, Chief Guest of this ICT Summit, and Secretary to the Government of India, Ministry of HRD, Shri Anil Sarup, sir, Dr. Kumkum Divan, Honorable Vice Chancellor, NIU, Dr. Harish Panji, Managing Director, Hampshire Industries, 
श्री महाराज दुबे जी हु इज हेडिंग मार्केटिंग विंग ऑफ जी मीडिया ग्रुप और डॉक्टर पी आर श्री स्टूडेंट सूद सर डायरेक्टर मैनेजमेंट डॉक्टर अजय कुमार जी डायरेक्टर अंडर ग्रेजुएट कैंपस डॉक्टर विद्याशेखरी मैम वाइस प्रिंसिपल यू जी कैंपस प्रोफेसर नैन्सी शर्मा द टीम ऑफ दिस आई सी टी समिट द कन्वीनर डॉक्टर उमंग को कन्वीनर्स प्रोफेसर स्मिता कंसल एंड प्रोफेसर पूजा धर जी द फैकल्टी मेम्बर्स फ्रॉम अदर इंस्टीट्यूट्स एंड स्टूडेंट हु आर पार्ट ऑफ दिस इवेंट as we all know that past few decades in the context of information technology which is supplemented and supported by communication technology has witnessed a paradigm shift which started from research centers before 50s traveled a journey from mainframes to mid range mini to mini to micro and now the size of the computers which are about to fit in in our human bodies the networks the concept of network which is started with a concept of just securing data by keeping it replicated at different locations now creating a way for a different concept together all together iot or ioe now all these technologies have laid foundation to development of newer concepts applications which can not only be useful for the privileged class of society but also the benefits reaches to the common man and in this context various initiatives by government of india were taken and one of them was digital india which was then the next step ahead was new india vision the students those who are sitting here i'm sure and the faculty members of the delegates this is need of the hour that the people who have come here they have in fact led this entire transformation of information and communication technology which is reaching to common man they have led from the front whether it is policy making or government initiatives or it is taking to the masses through media or from background the industry or the research which is undertaken by the academia this panel is combination of all these and then an entrepreneur or other edupreneur who has taken the lead from the front to create awareness about all these developments to various segment of society which includes students also and each and every statement which is going to be uttered in this session will be of immense use for each of us so my humble request would be to each of you that we will understand the sanctity of this session the need of such deliberations and discussions and will try to take maximum benefit of it sri anil swarup sir i understand that how busy he has been and how active he has been because he is the person who is now leading the school education and transforming the education process in the country especially in the state of rajasthan the kind of initiative he has taken probably we are going to see in very soon that so uh, i welcome you all in this inaugural session and i'm sure the objective of digital india vision which is started to digitization of services and facilities which are being created by government so that everyone has its access in a transparent and secure way but the biggest challenge was how to take these services their benefits to the common man and there was a strong need of infrastructure now new india vision though it has different perspective different objectives and different target altogether but then one of the prominent objective of this new india vision is to lay down a competent infrastructure through which the benefits the services the facilities which have been digitized to can be taken away or can be taken to the common man and i'm sure that these deliberations are going to address these dimensions in very effective way and each of us when we will be leaving this hall will be enriched by learning a lot which otherwise would have not been possible i once again welcome all the dignitaries on the dais of the dais and everyone who is present here i'm sure that 
you all will, will be a patient listener. We'll maintain the decorum of this session and we look forward to high class television here. Once again, welcome to you all, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now, I wish to invite the person who has always been there with all his support, a consistent source of motivation for the entire team, our Director of PRITS Education Group, Shri Sundar Sood, sir, for his address. Thank you. I think all of you were chit chatting when some of the speakers were talking about it. Give a big round of applause for four gentlemen who are sitting here. That is Mr. Maharaj Dube, Dr. Harish Pant, Shri Adil Saroop, and Dr. K.K. Diwan. I think they need a standing ovation from you people so that you can activate it. Get up. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down. Listen to what they say in the next few minutes when they'll be talking to you. Because just, just keep quiet, please settle down. There has to be a pin drop silence when people like Mr. Anil Saroop speak. They are the silent makers of this nation. The people who have never come on the screen. The roots which have disdained fame. These are those people and believe me, in whichever department he has gone, it has been a Midas touch to that department. Solve the national problems in one way or the other. And today, he is the person who is changing the paradigms in the education of India. Mr. Anil Saroop, give a round of applause for him. And when, when I was talking to Dr. Sunil Pandey the other day, he said I should have an ensemble of people in the morning so that you youngsters realize that in the nursery of education at the learning center of ITS, how important you are all sitting here to create this nation and give it a different shape altogether. We had a people from the media, very, very important media, the fourth pillar, the fifth pillar, or if I say so, the strongest all in all pillar of day to day. That is from Z Media, Mr. Mehrab. And then, of course, from education, Dr. K.K. Diwan. And, of course, from the upcoming field of this world, and especially India, which is going to be touched in a way, and the revolution is awaiting all of you to enjoy the fruits, provided you listen to them today properly as to what their vision is. That is the industry called aerospace, Dr. Harish Pant. I mean, that is, that is what we are going to listen to them. Now, let me tell you, coming to the topic, I don't have much time to elaborate the things, but coming to the topic today, that is the ICT in nation development. You see, you are all, most of you are IT students. Those who have come from other colleges, those faculties who have come from other institutions. A book was written by Bill Gates long back, and the book was Speed at the Rate 20. He's used one sentence at that time, which became a Bible for many researchers in the times to come. And the sentence was, if you squeeze communication, you'll be dead nations. And it's a fact. That is where, if I talk more about it, in 1955, one person called McCarthy, he came to the Dartmouth conference, he went there, and then there he spoke about one more thing, and that was artificial intelligence. And believe me, that is the future of you youngsters. The communication system as it stands today is still evolving. It has not reach, reached its pinnacle, especially like countries like India, where we still become the users of social media. We still say it is the communication which we have, which has improved. But no, if you look at it, every day there is a new invention which encourages, encourages the chit chat, I call it a talking media, a talking source, a talking communication, you call it chat box. It's basically what you talk face to face. It's basically what you say that yes, we are collecting data. For what? We are doing Aadhaar link. For what? We are having demonetization 
spaced all across the policies and coming on the mobiles. For what? For you to understand that there is somebody sitting in the government who's communicating with you and telling you the policies of national building, which were a remote thing a few years ago. That is the strength of communication. Let me tell you, you see, electronics and information technology, never, nobody came out and said computer science, it came later probably. The first thing came, which came was the IT, the information technology, because we all have the kick in our stomachs to know what's tomorrow. And if you want to really bring the fruits for yourself, bring the fruits for the growth and development, what you got to know today is what will be tomorrow, sitting in these universities, sitting in these rooms, and talking to these people who are sitting on the dice, they'll tell you where the future is. I won't stand between you and them because they're the people who will tell you where we stand today. Enjoy the session. Every speaker has its own ideas, much advanced <coughs> than what we know. Thank you very much and have a great day. <coughs>
Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. The theme of this National ICT Summit is New India Vision, ICT Nation Building, which aims at creating a platform to bring different stakeholders of the society to discuss, deliberate, and understand the emerging role of every dimension. And in this summit, we have eminent speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, let me take this opportunity to introduce Sri Meraj Dubeji. Mr. Meraj Dubey serves as the head of marketing at Z Media Corporation Limited. Mr. Dubey has been Deputy Vice President of SL Group since June 2016. Mr. Dubey has over 16 years of experience in the field of journalism and media management. With experience in news reporting, news presenting, debate shows, show designing, marketing, and content positioning, he has over the years become one of the most celebrated anchors in business journalism. He has started his career with CNBC and moved to Star News and became a well-known name with his show, Fund Ka Funda. He has joined NDTV in 2007 and was part of some popular shows like India Novaje, Mani Mantra on NDTV Profit, and Sabse Bada Rupaya. We are really privileged to have you, sir, today with all of us. I request and invite Mr. Dubesh, sir, for sharing his experience with all of us. Hello, oh, you can, you all can hear. Well, good morning, everybody. Anil Sahab, Anil Ji, Arpit Bhai, or Dr. Sood, Dr. Pandey, distinguished guests, distinguished faculty, and all students. Congratulations, congratulations for being here, and thank you very much for inviting me and taking out time to uh, hear my thoughts. Uh, you know, I think we should maybe begin. Um, we all know we are here to discuss ICT, information, communication, technology. And we were all on Facebook last night till 11 o'clock. Hara? Kitne baje tak te? 2 o'clock? 2 baje tak hum ICT apne haato pe khel rahe the. That's, that's revolutionary because, you know, uh, if you go back and ask your teachers and ask your parents, दो बजे तो बहुत देर हो जाती थी जो दो बजे तक पढ़ के आता था वो चैंपियन होता था अगले मॉर्निंग कॉलेज में तो बट दैट्स ओके दैट्स योर चॉइस इनफैक्ट दैट्स व्हाट आईसीटी हैज डन टू अस इट हैज गिवन अस सो मेनी चॉइसेस दैट वी कैन मेक दैट इज ऑलमोस्ट डेंजरस नाउ बट नेवरलेस आई वांट टू बिगिन बाय कांग्रेचुलेटिंग यू बिकॉज़ यू मेड इट यू gone through kindergarten, you've gone through high school, and then you come to college. Some of you have gone through undergraduation and come to masters. So let's, let's give an applause to ourselves. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we all have had some bad days with our teachers, with our parents. How many of you, you think you have, you've had a tough day with parents and tough day with teachers? I've had some. Ah, and that's, it's good to be honest, right? But then, you know, the beauty of it is that we go back and we still love our parents, we still respect our teachers. And after 15, 20 years in, in, in a professional environment, I go back to my teachers and I look up to them, ki aapne sahi sikhaya tha, aapne achha bataya tha. So, uh, uh, that's a lot of achievement. You overcome them, you overcome all the hurdles. Lekin, apne achievement ke liye aapne bhoat kam taali bajai hai. Thoda zor se taali, ICT, IS, ha, ITS wali taali. All right, but you know what? I also have a comment to make. Your achievement is not very big after all. I'm sorry. It's not very big. Why? It's because you had the productivity tools. You had the productivity tools which your parents did not or their parents did not. Do you get what I mean? Our productivity tools are not 20 years ago. 
Hmm? I, I'm catching a train after this, and I've got my kids also here. I thought my kids will also be inspired to see you all. But one of them is actually playing on mobile right now. He's not listening to me or you. But, you know, so it's, 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 it's the tools that, you know, really engage us. And, and then that's when it becomes dangerous. So whoever is using those productivity tools wisely is going ahead. It's, it's far, far ahead than others. So uh, what I mean to say is productivity tools are so much that you have to do a lot of work for you. मतलब इतना तो करना पड़ेगा ही उसके आगे आप क्या करते हैं ये आपकी सफलता तय करेगा क्योंकि आपके पास भी गूगल है मेरे पास भी गूगल है आपके पास भी माइक्रोसॉफ्ट है मेरे पास भी है अब हम में से जो क्वालिटेटिव वर्क करेगा वो आईसीटी को सक्सेस बनाएगा और वो इंडिया विजन जो हम बातें कर रहे हैं आज सम ऑफ यू वन मस्ट बी थिंकिंग बहुत एकेडमिक बातें हैं इंडिया विजन ये वो ये तो बस मन की बात में होता है हमें क्या करना है इसे so, uh, you know, it, it matters to all of us. It's not just a matter of a seminar or a lecture, but it affects all of us. So, uh, uh, talking about that, actually, as I said, Microsoft. Ha, can someone tell me what is similar between Microsoft, Bone Vita, and Bata? Can someone tell? Bolye, aap kuch bol rahe? Microsoft, Bone Vita, and Bata. Huh? Both are what? All of them are what? Earning profits. Okay. Okay, they are used by masses all over the world or at least in India we can see. Any other guess? All right, I mean, I was thinking it would maybe come down, but what I, what I, why I'm saying those? Okay, you want to have a guess, please? Right, almost there is what, what the answer that I want is she's almost there. Uh, Madam, uh, pro, yeah. Yes. Yes, so someone said we, we are every day using them. Someone said all of them are used by youngsters. But you know what I think? We can live without all of them. So what are they doing in our lives? We can walk without Bata shoes of shoes, we can work without Microsoft, we can, you know, eat and drink without Bone Vita, but probably my observation is that they are all trying to boost your productivity. So, uh, you know, uh, that, that, that's what I was talking about. In fact, I, I, I was talking to Dr. Pandey, ki aap, aap kya sunna chahate, hum kya discuss karenge. So, unke se nikal ga ki ultimately it's about productivity that we are discussing in ICD Summit. And I really like that, that someone somewhere is discussing productivity because productivity has gone up by multifolds. It has taken a leap in the last few years. Do you all understand by productivity what I mean? Jo kaam ghanto mein hota tha, wo minto mein ho jata hai. Jo jaha jane ke liye ghanto lagte the, wo hum ab kuch ghanto mein pahunch jate hain. Hum aaj yaha hai, kal Amerika mein ho sakte hain, parso wapas yaha ho sakte hain. So all that is, has boosted your productivity and ICT, information, communication and technology has played a great role. But then that's where it is, it is playing role in all, all the aspects that, of our life. But you know, I want to um, maybe come down and discuss something. I'm going to take another five minutes, Dr. Pandey here, because before I lose your attention, I want to discuss about attention as a, as a tool of productivity that some of you might be missing out. Any guesses on that? Attention, have you heard as a productivity tool? You know what happens is, I hope my range, this mic range works still here. So what happens is, I want to tell you a very short story. Uh, and I read it in uh, the Daniel Goldman book. There was this tribe in Pacific Islands. We all know Pacific Islands ka hai, Prashant Mahasagar mein, US or Japan ke beach mein, bahut chote chote islands hai. Aur wahan par kuch uh, ek tribe thi, जो अलग-अलग द्वीपों में एक द्वीप से दूसरे द्वीप तक बिना जीपीएस के जाते थे। आज वहाँ जहाँ जाते हैं तो उन्हें जीपीएस सिस्टम चाहिए होता है क्योंकि प्रशांत महासागर इतना बड़ा है आप यहाँ से वहाँ पहुँच ही नहीं सकते। लेकिन वो कैसे नाव से जाते थे? वो देखते थे पानी का रंग बदल रहा है। और एक आइलैंड से दूसरे आइलैंड पहुंच जाते थे क्योंकि चारों तरफ समुद्र है आप कुछ यू कैन मेक आउट एनीथिंग व्हाट वाज इट आई थिंक दे वर पेइंग अटेंशन 
and that's one big tool that we are missing out after ICT is here, uh, because attention is what take you, uh, what could make you very very productive. Uh, you know, but attention in what kinds? Attention in what kinds? Attention uh, in terms of how decisions are being made around you, how why your professor is teaching you something what he or she is teaching why your school has organized this summit here did you pay attention why some of these distinguished people have chosen to spend time with us they have something to say are we paying attention attention can be in many ways attention could be on what is the weather like today what are my colleagues and my fellow students thinking to today what were they thinking yesterday Gaziabad ki hawa kaisi hai from that to major things, every line that you are hearing, what is happening within you, are you self-aware, are you paying attention to what's happening with you, are you learning or you're not learning or you have difficulties in learning, after learning, what is the shift, hum BA, BBA, MBA, MCA or PhD karne ke baad hum seek to rahe kya wo shift bhi ho rahe hai, hamara behavior, hamara knowledge, so the, that, that's what is changing a lot and uh, under the uh, uh, ICT revolution, don't forget that you have to pay attention to what's happening, what does your environment need and how much you are giving it, which side, what contribution you are giving it, is all, is all the message that I want to deliver before you all. Hmm, Baki, ek zarur baat mein kahunga ki productivity, ICT se bada to gai hai, lekin quality gir bhi rahi hai. And that's why I was saying that you also have Google, I also have Google, you also have Microsoft, and I also have it. So that country, because we are talking about India today, we are talking about a national summit, that country will increase, which will take the productivity, but the quality will increase. You are doing whatever you do, everyone is doing in the world. And it will increase or it will increase the contribution of the contribution of the क्वालिटी उसमें लाएगा प्रोडक्टिविटी में और इसीलिए कुछ देश कुछ हजार की जनसंख्या लेकर भी बड़े बड़े काम कर रहे हैं और कुछ देश लाखों और करोड़ों की जनसंख्या लेकर भी वो काम या वो अचीवमेंट्स नहीं कर पाते आई एम नॉट सेइंग इंडिया इज वीकर और बैकवर्ड व्हाट आई एम सेइंग इज व्हाट वी नीड टू गो और वेयर वी नीड टू गो फ्रॉम हियर इज पे अटेंशन टू क्वालिटी एंड 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 दैट्स हाउ मेजर आवर अचीवमेंट्स लेट्स नॉट अचीव आवर सेल्फ्स बाय आवर डिग्रीज our, uh, you know, uh, house size, our which car we drive, what, what clothes we wear, all that is gone. No one cares for it anymore. Because all that is available to everyone now. What is not available is quality, the depth of productivity, the depth of knowledge. And I hope someday you understand this message and deliver. And um, ITS ka naam roshan karenge, apna naam roshan karenge, aur desh ko aage badhayenge. So, one of the productivity roadblocks, which is the ICT roadblock, is the quality and you have to pay attention for it. So, I am wishing a great productive and qualitative life to you all. Thank you so much for inviting me today. Thank you, sir. Productivity has really gone up multifold and is using, using technology, our life has become easy. Thank you so much, sir. As Sri Miraj Dubesar has uh, to leave for some important assignments, now request our Vice Chairman ITS Education Group, Sri Arpi Chedda, sir, to present memento to our eminent guest, Sri Miraj Dubeji, as a token of regard. Thank you, sir. Our next eminent speaker of today's summit, Dr. Harish Pant, sir. Now, I take this opportunity to introduce Dr. Pant. Dr. Pant, Managing Director at Hanson Industries Private Limited, is having the global experience of 32 years in aerospace, automotive, and steel sectors. He's a mentor, poet, author, blogger, columnist, and keynote speaker, developed global vision and sustainability model and further carrying out research on three currencies model for social, environmental, and economical impacts. 
He's a distinguished alumnus and fellow of Institution of Engineers, MIET, Vice Chairman, Indian Institution of Industrial Engineering, Member Advisory Committee, IMA Bangalore, Member of Aeronautical Society of India and SAE. He's a recipient of Outstanding Corporate Award, MTC Global, IMA Operational Excellence Award, Mother Teresa Excellence Award, Award for Industrial Development and others. We welcome you at ITS, sir. Now request and invite Dr. Pansa for his remarks. A very good morning to all of you. Good morning. Yes. I welcome to all of you to celebrate this ICT uh, National Summit here, uh, 2017. Uh, my sincere thanks to Dr. Sunil Pandey uh, for inviting me in this uh, program. Uh, it's my privilege and honor to be with uh, Sri Arpit uh, Chadda, Sri Surinder Sood, Sri Anil Swarup, Dr. K.K. Devan, Mr. Meghraj Zubey, who just left, uh, and Mr. Sunil Kumar Pandey, other eminent personalities, faculty, and the students attending this program. Whole world is going through massive changes wherein living with uncertainty has become a new normal. I will share my thoughts, first providing global context, leading to Indian context, then deliberating on drivers of changes in IT and ICT impact, and concluding with actions and takeaway for students. In terms of global context, we see that twin cancers are impacting world economic growth. First is the high debt, second is no growth happening, or very low growth happening worldwide. Just to give an example, USA has a, got a debt of $23.4 trillion. And we know that one of the biggest economy, China, is slowing down. We also see uh, Brexit impact. Uh, still, UK is uh, dithering whether to go for Brexit or not go, and the impact which will, it will have in Europe and Britain. We see geopolitical dynamics playing out, low oil prices and future demand for oil uh, is making even USA start exporting oil and shale gas. Have you heard about autonomous vehicle? Autonomous vehicle? None of you? OK. Uh, you must have heard Google has developed uh, autonomous vehicle, and so are the many uh, companies are developing uh, autonomous vehicle. And there is a term being used now in engineering circle where they call it SS. A stands for autonomous, C for connected, E for electrified, and fourth is shared. This whole combination is going to have such a far-reaching impact that measures like GM, Ford, Toyota, you name it, all of them are getting hugely impacted by it. 3D printing technology is going to disrupt manufacturing environment substantially. I come from aerospace background, and just to give you a background, recently GE has developed ATP engine. Uh, it used to have 285 parts all high precision, high temperature, withstanding components. These have been reduced to simply 12 parts. It used to take 24 months to develop an engine. Now this time has been reduced to weeks. We are seeing employee, uh, employment-less growth, global warming. The people who are living in and around NCR, they are breathing polluted air. 
and what is moving progressively towards platform thinking. In Indian context, we know that Modi has recently upgraded India's sovereign rating uh, after 13 years of gap, and this has uh, shot up the share market substantially. Merrill Lynch India also says that India should be the third largest economy by 2028, with the GDP growth fact at 10% for coming decade. Also, we know that, uh, as per various projections made by economists, India should be the fifth largest economy in the world by year 2019. So we are seeing that India is at the cusp of massive changes, would require a whole set of enabling technologies, innovations, requisite resources, along with policy support of government. Ever-growing demographics of India calls for unprecedented human endeavor due to sheer scale and scope, unprecedented in the history of humankind. The stage is being set for massive growth through various government policies and interventions, GST, Aadhaar, Startup India, like these many programs uh, have been initiated by government. Information, communication and technology is enabling our present hyper-connected and integrated world. Uh, there are five major drivers of change in IT. The first is the globalization. Uh, it is expected that by 2020, there would be 50 billion connected devices. Uh, about a week back, uh, there was a news that uh, Qualcomm is developing uh, Bluetooth devices, which will be charged through radio frequencies. Using RF as an energy source means the Bluetooth chip will have an infinite lifetime uh, and include processing and sensors. As it will be available at a fraction of the price of traditional devices, it will be an enabler of an IoT revolution. This is first time happening, and it is expected that by 2018, this device will get commercialized. So IoT is very, IoT is very much going to happen, and 2018 onwards, the implementation will skyrocket. Data explosion, we are saying 90% of the world data was created in two years. And uh, with the content explosion, we are going to see even more uh, dramatic uh, explosion of uh, data. Mobile connectivity, now we have 6 billion uh, population, which is 87% of our population covered in mobility. Uh, recently launched program uh, by government which is Bharatnet, with an investment of 2.3 lakhs crore, is going to further push up uh, mobility connectivity in rural India as well. We see rise of social businesses. Consumers are demanding better and more fulfilling experience on with social media onslaught for negative experiences. Now modernizing is not uh, uh, simple your wish. It is for survival, it has to be implemented across various industries and institutions. Today's high volume, high velocity, and high variety business transactions can't be handled by 20 year old legacy systems. Now all the business needs machine learning, analytics, augmented reality, virtual reality, and artificial intelligence to meet future aspirations of humanity. There is going to be unprecedented ICT impact, uh, information, communication, and technology being three enablers are going to have unprecedented disruptions in every facets of our life. Information with analytics and artificial intelligence, uh, you might have heard IPM Watson comes with this capability, will drive all businesses without much human interface. Communication enabled with 5G, 6G will send TB of data in seconds, and technology will connect all things and devices seamlessly, where subsequent actions will be performed by machine learning. This will leave only design, creative, and social connect work for humans. 
technology will be progressively utilized for dangerous, dirty, duplicate, and delicate work being done by humans presently. Emerging ABC of technologies are analytics, big data, and cloud computing. If you are not developing deep capabilities in these three, these three areas, you will be left by 2020. So I request all the young students to develop deep capabilities in three areas. This is based on NASCOM uh, white paper released about two weeks back. Information, communication, and technology is changing what we do, how we make decisions, and how we organize our work. If you take an example of uh, uh, cooking uh, food at home, this has uh, changed. Many times we decide not to cook, order half cooked, fully prepared, dine out, so many options are available. With the technology, all these things have been possible. Um, so all these changes call for actions. Before I talk about a few action steps, I would like to ponder on a few points. Learn and then work for life needs a change in narrative to become learn for life and keep your work. If you're not learning for life, you will not find work. I come with mechanical engineering background. You must be wondering what I'm doing with ICT. I have been called here not for what I worked for 30 years, but what I have learned in the last two years. So this is an example where you have to keep learning to make yourself relevant. Few works will be completely automated. This is as per IBM CEO. He says that few works will be completely automated. Quite a few will be partially and most of the jobs impacted on various degrees thus changing rapidly education and skill sets for the upcoming future. If you talk with any IT CEO, he will watch for these words. Engaging industry like academia, um, uh, engaging industry by academia is not enough in a rapidly changing ecosystem. Engaging has to be transcend to co-creating. You have to invite industry and co-create with the industry. Simply engaging won't help. The biggest and most resourceful organizations are awakening to the reality of bright ideas and solutions popping out from anywhere by any person throughout the world. Diversity is becoming a virtue wherein most of the educational institutions are racing towards creating the sameness. We should be creating and celebrating diversity in the institution, not the sameness. Dealing with the disruption needs an asymmetric approach. Every aspect of education system needs a complete change, massive change, upside down approach. We need a combination of in-house innovations and open innovations. I uh, am a global mentor for uh, quite a few uh, innovation platforms. And uh, from that experience, uh, I can tell that all the industries now appreciate what they do in-house, but progressively they are increasingly getting associated with the open innovation platforms. And it is uh, also suggested that all of you uh, not only do your in-house innovations changes, but invite outside institutions and agencies and collaborate with them for open innovations. Uh, 100 Open Startup is one of the forums where I am associated with. And there are a couple of others where you can participate. Um, Peter Drucker, who is the known management guru, he has said that the best way to manage change is to create it. So if you are not creating change, you are getting absolute, obsolete by day. To sum up, what do we need to do as professionals and institutions? We need to build a system of responding. If you have not built a system of responding, it means that you are sleeping and getting slow in the race. Second is each professional has to create high value addition. Incremental will not do. 1.5 times will not do. Each of professional has to start thinking in terms of how to create 10x 
uh, uh, value addition. Lifetime learning and relearning is becoming more uh, alarming and more required. So uh, to sum up, uh, five takeaways for aspiring students. First, think big. India is going to leave three, four times of what it is in coming five to six years, seven years. So you have to think big. If you won't think big, somebody else will. Collaborate and co-create. Dive, deep dive into tumultuous changes to understand trends. Third, develop deep understanding of technology and domain. Experiment, try out, implement, fail often, learn fast. Be a lifelong learner, healthy, and connect with the self. I can tell you the most challenging uh, part of my career is not to achieve the goals and objectives which I set forth. With certain capabilities, certain, uh, you know, life force, uh, we can achieve many things. But how to be healthy, how to be happy is the most challenging thing which everyone struggles. Better you learn too early in your career. Walt Disney has rightly said that all our dreams can come true if we have courage to pursue them. And in this context, it is very evident that nation building is not a one man's job. Congratulations to ITS management, director, faculty, students, and organizers, organizers for this flagship event. Once again, my sincere thanks for the invite and patient listening. Invite you all to connect and would be happy to contribute to the success of all of you. Wish you all the best. Thank you, sir for your words of wisdom. Yes, we all should now update ourselves in big data, analytics, and machine learning to sustain an IT world. Now, I take this opportunity to introduce Sri Anil Sarupji. Sri Anil Sarup is presently posted as Secretary, Department of School and Education Literacy, Government of India. Before this assignment, in his capacity as Secretary, Ministry of Coal, he was instrumental in carrying out the auction of coal blocks that is likely to result in the revenue flow of round rupees 3 lakh crore for to the state. The initiatives taken by him resulted in record production of coal in the country. This production helped in tiding over the crisis created by coal shortage. The Indian administrative officer of the Uttar Pradesh cadre 1981 batch has been considered a change agent in all the departments he has worked in his. His colleagues respect him for his light heart approach and keen interest in details. He is the man behind the online monitoring of key projects in several ministries and spreadheaded the first ever e-auction of coal in India. He has headed the many key government projects, including the Project Monitoring Group, under the Cabinet Secretariat, whose task was to remove the roadblocks for stalled projects across the country. Earlier, he has held the position of Director General of Labor Welfare in the Labor Ministry. His integrity and work alcoholic inclination are slowly but steadily having a runoff effect on the ministry. We are really privileged to have you at ITS, sir. Now request and invite Sri Anil Sarupji to share his experience and with all of us. Good morning, my young friends and not so young friends. <clears throat> so that came from the young friends. Not so young friends were not so enthusiastic. Now, I will talk to you in two parts. One, with regard to what am I doing in the government domain for the use of ICT. And second, I'd like to talk to you all to address you and to convey to you that ICT is here, but whether we are going to use it, abuse it, or not use it. But before I start, my apologies to Dr. Devan. I pushed the organizers to start the session on time. That's an obsession with me. I'm close to my retirement. I can't change myself. I insist 
that people who come on time should not be penalized. So my request to the organizers here is in future, you must start every event on time and close it on time. Because that's one clear symbol of discipline which should be imparted to the children here. Second, I'm, I'm, I have often wondered, because I was, this is the second time that I come here, and I love this August gathering, this lovely campus. But on this occasion, I'm a bit perplexed. Why are the teachers and lecturers walking up and down the alley? Probably to discipline you. Because I did mention to the vice chairman that when one of the speakers was speaking, it, I wasn't very sure whether the children sitting here were actually listening to him were or in absorbed in their own daydreams. My friends, every moment is crucial. Every, every moment is crucial and more so crucial for you because we did not live in this competitive world that you live in. You lose out on a single moment, you lose out on the race. So either you consciously rest or you consciously engage. There is nothing in between. You have to decide for yourself whether you want to entertain yourself, whether you want to rest, or you want to engage. And engagement is deep listening. It is not necessarily talking. Listen to what is being spoken to you. Pick up the elements that might help you in future. That will be the difference between success and failure. If you choose to exist and not to engage, you can rest assured that you'll fail. It is better that some of you walk out of this hall and do something else which are of interest to you rather than sit here and do nothing. Your parents have spent enormous amount to put you here. But that doesn't mean that you should be working all the time. It is not necessary. In fact, you should entertain, you should rest, but do one thing at a time. You can't be sitting here and entertaining yourself. You can't be sitting here and not engaging with yourself. If you're sitting here, you engage with us. If you're not sitting here, you can go out. In fact, the best of colleges in the world, the best of universities, don't make attendance compulsory. A student is allowed to walk out the moment he wants to walk out. And that's how it should be. Discipline should not come by teachers walking up and down the alley. It should come from within. If it doesn't come from within, I can assure you ICT will be the most dangerous thing that is going to happen in this country. Because ultimately, ICT is a tool. It is how you use the tool. And the use of the tool will depend on how you organize yourself. If you haven't organized yourself appropriately, then either you will not use it or you will abuse it. And both will be devastating. So my suggestion to all my young friends here is that please engage. Whatever you do, whatever, please be totally absorbed in it. Be extremely focused about what you're doing. If you lose the focus, you're going to lose the race. And what does focus mean? Focus actually means, I'm sorry for digressing from ICT, because I am convinced that ICT is here to stay. ICT is available to you. I don't have to talk about it. You feel it, you use it. My concern is, people like you, what you're going to do with ICT. So until this you're focused, until this you are focused on issues over which you have control. You know, it often happens that we are going somewhere and the traffic is so bad that you start cursing everyone around you. Now, does that curse help anybody? It doesn't. But there are so many occasions in our lives where we start cursing the surroundings, we start cursing everybody, though we have no control whatsoever. And there's another child or a man or a woman who's coolly listening to some music because he or she knows that they have no control over the event. Why necessarily waste your time on that? Why am I mentioning this? It is extremely important in your life to focus on issues over which you have an influence. Please don't bother about the fact that America has invaded Iraq. Yes, it's a good academic discussion. But you shouldn't be spending sleepless nights over the rationale behind America you should not fight over with your friend on why did Sachin Tendulkar play this wrong shot. He, should not, he would not have got out. There are a number of situations where we enter into a fight with our colleagues, with friends, on issues over which we have no control, but we fight. Fight over issues over which you have control. 
I must give you an instance. Before I joined the Indian Administrative Service, I was in the Indian Police Service. And one day, one of the officers who recently resigned, uh, retired as Director General of a Central Police Force, he was then a young man. He still believes he's young, though I don't think he is. He walked up to me. He said, Boss, Raj ko need nahi aari. Kya ho gaya? Bule, Boss, petroleum ke daam baut bada hai. Mene ka, yaar, petroleum ke daam ka tum to kuch kar nahi sakte. Bule, haan, kar tu nahi sakte. Mene, toh, raat ki need kyo haram kar raha ho? You're getting the point that should I be spending sleepless nights over issues over which I have no control. But he was doing it. Then he said, haan, Boss, aap sahi keh raha hai. Mene, toh, kuch kar nahi sakta. Mene, kyo raat ki need haram karu? Chala gaya. Teen mene baad, phir aaya mere paas. He said, boss, I don't sleep at night. I said, what happened? You have petrol gave me a damn, so you have to be okay without your intervention. There are many things that are fine without your intervention. He said, boss, India's population is very big. Tell me, I thought about it at night, and you have to be okay with your intervention. Now, you have to be okay. Now, the point that I am trying to emphasize here is, and you must understand this very clearly, is focus Focus, focus on issues over which you have control. And let me tell you, my dear friends, of, of course, if you've had chatted amongst yourself, then I can lend me your ears. Okay. So if you focus on issues over which you have control, success is guaranteed. But it's difficult because a huge number of distractions around you, which will distract you from the focus on which you should be. Let me tell you, I am now speaking fluently both in English and Hindi. It was not so to begin with. When I was a student like you, I was once booed out of the auditorium because I couldn't speak well. But then I resolved that I will evolve as a speaker and now I can speak before any audience anywhere in the world on any topic. It has to evolve. You have to be convinced that you can improve. Now, in a, in a conference on ICT, I'm talking about human capacities, capabilities, behavior, and attitude. To me, that's critical, and that's why I spoke about them. Now, since I have another five, seven minutes, I'll tell you what I'm trying to do through the use of ICT. First of all, let me inform you that in my department of school education, we don't have any file. Everything has been digitized. All papers digitized. So this, this enables me to travel throughout the country. When I, was, when I was posted as school secretary, I was mentioned here. Now, during that time, all scams had happened in the coal. You must have read about it. Various scams had happened. And to set things right, government posted me as school secretary. So I asked a friend of mine, how is this coal sector? So listen to his answer, what does he say? What does he say? What does he say? You know, all the answers I got. In his question, lay the answer to my question. So anyway, I was there for two years and by God's grace and because of a fabulous team that I have, I think teamwork is extremely, extremely critical in any success story. So I had a fabulous team. We cleaned up the coal sector. So much so that when I took over as coal secretary, I was working 24 by 7. There were days when I didn't go home in the night. But when I left as coal secretary, I had only 45 minutes of work. The rest of it had all been streamlined, so much so that I went to the Prime Minister's office and I told them that you may wind up the coal ministry, it's not required. Everything is automated. How did it become automated? It became through ICT. Everything is transparent. I am obsessed with two things. One I mentioned about punctuality, the other is transparency. Much of the problems that we have in governance, much of the problems that we have in society is on account of opacity that exists. The moment you start hiding things, there is something wrong. So when I was posted in the cabinet secretariat to monitor projects above 1,000 crore at a time in UPA 2 when all scams were opening up, I took the route of transparency and technology. We set up a portal wherein any industry having any problem could go to that portal and mention its problem. That problem would automatically flow to the concerned joint secretary who was supposed to comment on the portal itself. We had tripartite discussions and the decisions were dictated directly onto the portal. Fileless, paperless clearance of projects. We cleared projects worth 6 lakh crores in the space of 15 months 
and not a finger was pointed because we used ICT, because we used transparency. So the point again that I'm trying to make to you, my young friends, is and though it's not structured here, I would love to take some questions from you because I would like to assure myself that whatever I have spoken has not gone over you like a bouncer. Some of it has registered. Some of you were with me. Some of you were listening to me despite your engagement elsewhere. So if you permit, I would like to end only by saying that there will be occasions when you will feel despondent. There will be occasions. Even I have had occasions where I felt despondent, where I feel, what's going on? And in fact, when, when, jab aapke ko kundha hoti hai, jab aapko taklif hoti hai, tab aapka poet aapke andar se nikal ke aata hai, to mene ek din Ishwar se pooch dala. Sanshay nahi man me, teri srishti me ya tujh me. Sanshay, Sanshay, doubt. Sanshay nahi man me, teri srishti me ya tujh me. Tu hi tu mere man me samaya, sab kuch mene tujh se hai paaya. फिर भी स्तब्ध हूं व्याकुल हूं अशांत हूं शायद अनजान हूं क्या यही जीवन है जो पापी है दुराचारी है क्यों जीत रहा निरंतर है स्पष्ट करो अभिव्यक्त करो कुछ तो करो मेरे राम ये मेरी वेदना थी राम के लिए तुरंत उत्तर आया तुरंत उत्तर क्या आया समय रुका नहीं समय रुका नहीं हम क्यों ठहर गए समय रुका नहीं हम क्यों ठहर गए अभी तो हम चले भी नहीं फिर क्यों थक गए उठो पथिक पथिक इज अ ट्रैवलर उठो पथिक मत भ्रमित हो धूमिल अंधियारे में श्रेष्ठ वही जो घिरा नहीं हो क्षणिक निराशा में जागो जगाओ मन मत बहलाओ एक मसीहा तुम भी बन जाओ सो यू परमिट आई विल टेक सम क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम देम इज दैट ओके विद यू आई नो आई एम ओवर शूटिंग द टाइम बट जस्ट टू री इनफोर्स दैट आई गॉट कन्वे टू सम ऑफ यू इफ नॉट ऑल ऑफ यू सो इफ देर आर एनी क्वेश्चन अंडर द सन यू फ्री टू आस्क कैन आई हैव अ माइक गोइंग डाउन देर कैन समी टेक द माइक डाउन आप लोगों में से कोई हिंदी और अंग्रेजी में समझता हूं पंजाबी भी समझता हूं बोल नहीं पाता हूं इन तीनों भाषाओं में आप प्रश्न कर सकते हैं Wonderful, which means what I said. You perhaps enjoyed it, but didn't assimilate it. God bless you. Thank you, sir, for your words and a beautiful poem. Truly said by you, sir. Discipline is one of the key mantra for a successful life. Thank you so much, sir. Now take this opportunity to introduce Dr. Kum Kum Devan. Dr. Kumkum Devan, Vice Chancellor, Noida International University. She has over 45 years of work experience in various capacities in central government and private universities in India and abroad. She has been a visiting professor, Coroudia University, Montreal, Canada. She has also been the Vice Chancellor, Acting Jamia Millia Islamia Central University, Dean Faculty of Natural Sciences from 2005 to 2008. Professor and Head Department of Mathematics in 2000 to 2003 at Jamia Millia Islamia. She was a Professor of Mathematics Department of Mathematics and conducting and supervising research scholars and teaching MSc Mathematics, MSc Industrial Mathematics with computer applications. We welcome you, ma'am, at ITS. Now I request and invite Dr. K K Devan for her address. good morning everybody honorable director mr sunil kumar pande honorable secretary minister ministry of hrd shri anil swarup ji honorable shri arp chadda vice chairman its group shri surinder sood director its group dr harish pand Managing Director, Hamsons Industries. Uh, other dignitaries on the dais, off the dais. 
delegates, faculty members, students, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to be with all of you this morning and share with you some of my views on the subject of today's conference, New India Vision, ICT in Nation Building. Let me first of all express my thanks to the management and the organizing committee, especially Dr. Sunil Kumar Pandey and Dr. Ajay Kumar, who gave me this opportunity to be with you this morning. I would also like to express my appreciation for choosing such a relevant and important topic of the conference. This shows not only their vision, but also their concern to expose the thinking of the students from today in technology to tomorrow in digital technology and day after tomorrow in digital enabled space technology, changes in medical sciences, changes in the way we live and the way we think. Probably, after the invention of steam engine, which brought revolution to the industry and changed the manpower to engine power to light energy, the next biggest revolution which the mankind is already witnessing and will have the impact on all aspects of human life for decades to come is information technology, computerization, and digitization. In terms of time and space, the speed at which this change is coming is also remarkable. Let me share with you that after the invention of telephone by Bell Graham, it took 155 years to reach a billion users. Then the diode technology changing to transistors and thereafter changing to LED screens, that is television, took over 50 years. Internet has taken 24 years to reach a billion users. Now, if we look at the smartphones, it has taken only eight years to reach more than one billion users. This is the speed with which technology is moving today. And as this technology moves, it disrupts the lifestyle. It disrupts the thinking process, and it creates a place for itself to be adopted practically by every human being all over the world, cutting across the divide of geography, caste, creed, and religion. The next revolution, which in my opinion will reach a billion of users, will take much less than five years. Some young man like you or Bill Gates must be working in some garage in his house to transform the smartphone from what it is to what it should be. We started with using phone to communicate the voice signals. It changed to SMS. It assimilated in it imaging to make it a camera. It included in it internet to transmit and receive the text. It has further expanded to become a television where we can see live television transmission. It has become a radio where we can hear AM and FM channels. It has become a storehouse with 128 megabyte storage in handheld smartphone. 4G and 5G technologies have converted into cinema screen where one can download a movie of three hours in less than five minutes. Not only this, digitization has made the smartphone into a bank from where one can withdraw and transfer money. It has become a friend-making platform by using Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp. Actors, politicians, singers use Facebook, Twitter for reaching large group of people in the shortest possible time. Not only this, the impact is such that today the biggest taxi company, Uber, does not own a single taxi. We simply order it on demand. The biggest hotel company, Airbnb, does not own a single hotel. We simply choose the price that suits us. We no longer go to the banks, we do mobile banking. Not only this, digital money transfer has saved Government of India 17,000 crores on gas subsidy alone using the Aadhaar card. Today, we feel lost if we don't have a mobile in our hand or if we are not connected to internet. You can imagine how much more will come once digitization sinks into our daily lives. Students, you are now facing education revolution. 
We are all familiar with virtual classrooms, e-library, library, online examinations, classroom being replaced by TV screens, teachers being replaced by pre-recorded lectures. Education and the system of education, methods of imparting education, teaching systems have all evolved over the centuries in response to the social, economical, geopolitical developments and the innovations in technology. All these have impacted and shall continue to impact the evolution in the education system itself. During the ancient ages to the Middle Ages, education was imparted on a person-to-person -person basis, thus limited in scale and also education was informal in nature. It involved close contact between the teacher and the taught, lack of standardization in curriculum, overlap of religious leaders as teachers had very limited scalability. Then the next phase started when we had the printing press with the innovation of the printing press, which was around 1940. This enabled the masses to get access to the basic education and brought in a culture of scientific inquiry. The teaching spread from one to many. Physical books allowed a means to disseminate knowledge. It led to establishment of colleges and universities like IITs with fixed rigid structures. It also led to the culture of research. The increasing scale of higher education led to the need of regulations and standardizations also. Governments of the country assumed role of the regulators and institutions like University Grants Commission, All India Council for Technical Education, Medical Council of India, Bar Council, etc. assumed importance. Then came the next phase, which started with uh, late 70s and early 80s with the emergence of internet and IT. In fact, the computer was in, invented in 1960, if I remember correctly, in the, and it was the University of California. But by the time it reached here, it was 70s and 80s. Now, this has changed the mode of delivery and has provided a technology platform to impart education and share learning. Blackboards and chalks were replaced by technology-driven interactive boards, increased use of learning devices like personal computers and laptops, and better learning through collaborations. However, the core learning methods remain unchanged. The speed and space of teaching changed, but the core philosophy of teaching with the teacher at the center of teaching remained unchanged. The teacher was always at the center of everything. The developments of interplay between industry and the university's skill development based on the need of the industry, sponsorship, internships, job assurances for specially skilled students are now driving the demand of higher education. Courses to bridge the gap between the university syllabus and on the job have resulted in bridge courses by the likes of NIITs. In developed countries, industry finance and sponsored research for technology development is also the new flavor of the day. Emerging technologies including social media, mobile technology, data analytics, and cloud computing are impacting the areas of higher education today. We call it the impact of SMAC. The next wave of transformation in higher education. This wave, which has started now, or we are trying to start, that here the student will be at the center of the ecosystem. And the student will be empowered here. Everything will revolve around the student. Till now, the teacher was at the center. Now it has to be the student at the center of the ecosystem, which will empower him to structure his individual path, keeping the goal which he has in mind. What we call this as a personalized learning. That is, he will have the freedom to opt 
for the variety of education program he wants. Any subject which he wants to learn or teach, he has the option to do it. Not only that, he will have the option of the instruction approach which he wants to follow. It can be the classroom teaching, it can be by online teaching, or it can be learning by experience. Or then the academic support which he wants. He can have the academic support of the books, he can have the academic support online, or he can have the uh, academic support of his teachers. Not only that, he can get the academic support by learning or experience learning while working itself. This, at the center of this new concept of personalized learning, will be the personal goal of the student or the learner. In fact, the student will be the architect of his own future. He will structure his own path. Today, evolution is taking place at the pace where change is measured not in terms of centuries. The change is measured in terms of years. Learning will not only be from universities, but from peers, industry, society at large, and earlier researches done in the field of study. Not only this, the stakeholders will no more be the parents, students, and teachers. The new stakeholders will be the learner. When I say the learner, it is not necessary that the learner is a student in some college or university. He will be the stakeholder, and the stakeholder will also be the universities. They will have to make a critical decision that is either embrace new opportunities and succeed or wrong choice and perish. Again, universities will have to focus on employability of the students. Not only this, it has to act as a hub of research. Then another stakeholder is the industry itself. The industry has to partner with the uni universities in framing the syllabi and also training the students. Not only this, there has to be a public-private partnership of the industry and the universities for research. And research must be sponsored by the industry also. Then the last stakeholder, which is an obvious stakeholder, is the society itself. Everything should be done keeping in mind the benefit of the society. Whatever research you are doing, it must benefit the society at large. And for this, the method of teaching has to be a dynamic technology. That is, the student will have the option how to do it, when to do it, why to do it, where to do it, and with whom to study. And learning would be instructional, remote, or content-based. Then learning can also be, as I said, through experience while working itself. On the job, it can be a social learning or through peers, or it can be supported by technology. For all this, we have to upgrade ourselves in education to the global standards because of the traditional way of learning, thinking, dissemination of information, which is changing very fast. A small beginning in this direction was the introduction of the choice-based credit system, which the University Grants Commission imposed on all the universities. No, nobody wanted to adopt this system because they thought it was very complicated. The system is as simple as any engineering student, if you have five papers in a semester, Four could be of engineering. One paper you can opt from any uh, field. It can be a paper from painting also. It can be a paper of music also. It can be a paper of a language. This reminds me, I had gone to Gorakhpur last year where the class 12 students were sitting and the parents were also there. After I talked to them, one student stood up and he said, I have a question to ask. I said, what is it? He said, ma'am, I don't want to be an engineer. But my parents want that I should become an engineer. I asked him, what do you want to become? His passion was music. He said, I want to become a singer. I want to continue in this. I asked him, 
are your parents with you? He said, yes. I said, all right, in that case, I'll reply. You have an option now that while doing engineering, you can opt one paper of any subject. You opt that paper of music and you can learn it online also. The government has said that if you uh, uh, do a course online, in that case, the marks which would be given there, you will be evaluated online. They will be transferred in your grade sheet. So that option is there. And for online courses, let me tell you, we have the courses of MOOCs, Coursera, and now we have the portal of Swayam and Swayam Prabha also. And all these courses are free. And the courses of MOOCs are given by none other than the Nobel laureates, eminent scientists, senior professors of Harvard University, Stanford, Cambridge, Berkeley, and many others. And it is absolutely free of cost. Nothing is charged. If you do not understand any specialization or any paper in the class, you can go online for that paper and you can study from there. Not only that, if you want to have a certification, in that case, uh, the cost is very less. If I, I'm not very sure, but it is around 1,000 rupees. You pay that and you get the certification done and you can transfer the marks from your certificate into the grade sheet given by the university. Well, we have, some others have also come here. So what is happening now, the government of India is permitting the foreign universities also to India. And with that, we will have an international syllabus and international approach of teaching. Well, though it has not started, but indirectly, yes, it has started when we, are, we have started having collaborations with the foreign universities, MOUs with the foreign university, and started giving the joint degrees. Now, in medical industry, just now, it was spoken about artificial intelligence. It is being used and robotic surgery is being done in many fields. One of the earliest hospital which adopted it is the Manipal Hospital. Besides robotic surgery, artificial intelligence comes in handy for analyzing the huge data. Let me give you one example. India has one oncologist for every thousand patients. Many patients are internet savvy and would like to know how a certain research paper would influence their treatment. Late 2015, early 2016, on an average, 130 research papers on cancers were published every day. It is not possible for a doctor to study all the papers. And so Manipal Hospital partnered with IBM to bring Watson, other name of artificial intelligence. Watson has the capacity of analyzing thousands of papers and mountains of data on each type of cancer and suggests the most appropriate treatment. No doubt, there is a concern over the risk which artificial intelligence poses to humanity, but this is only if it is mismanagement, mismanaged, such as terminator type killer robots. Now, I was seeing a video and made by the scientists and technologists of the Pentagon, Pentagon Research Agency, DARPA. They have shared their vision on how the world would be after 30 years. The neurologists are trying to make mind control gadgets which will control things by using their mind. We already have examples of brain implants which control the prosthetic arms or legs which give the sense of touch to a paralyzed man. Then they're trying to make the aircraft landing as simple as saying, prepare for landing. They're trying to build stuff as strong as steel and as light as carbon fiber beside other things. Now, I would like to share with you something about ancient India. We all know ancient India was a knowledge society which contributed a great deal to civilization. 
this I'm trying to encourage the students that if you want, you can do anything. In our country today, we don't have a world-class university in the country. The name of not even a single university comes in the top 100 universities. Yes, if we take top 200, then Indian Institute of Science and some IITs are there. But, you know, uh, you'll be sur surprised. Outside in the world, there is no world-class university in which Indians are not working. A country as small as Singapore, whose population is less than the half of the population of Mumbai, has three world-class universities. So if they can have, why can't we have? In our country, I would just like to tell you uh, two lines I'll speak, which gives the distance of sun from the earth. And these two lines are given in Hanuman Chalisa. And the same distance was given by NASA years later. Not only this, and since we don't have time, I won't uh, speak out those lines. There are only two lines. We had Aryabhatta. He gave us zero. The entire base of computer science is the binary system, zero, one. You would not be knowing that he gave many results, like Small formulas, a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square. He gave the arithmetical progression. He gave the area of the triangle and the circle. He gave the value of pi. And then Brahma Gupta gave the solution for quadratic equations. Bhaskaracharya, he was the one who gave the notation for fractions and the notations for writing successive powers, x, x square, x cube. Why I'm saying all this, you belong to this country where they had done wonders. And you can also do wonders. But the only thing is, you have to be dedicated. And you have to learn to be learners. As somebody said just now, you have to become lifelong learners. So the duty of the teacher today is to see to it that he turns the students or he tells them or uh, how to learn to become learners. It is just like this. If you want to learn walking, you have to walk to learn walking. You have to sing to learn singing. So this is a must. Now, if a, when a child goes to a school, goes to class 11, he decides he wants to be an engineer or a doctor or whatever it is. But what happens? Eight years later, when he becomes the engineer or doctors, the 10 jobs which he was focusing when he joined class 11, seven out of the 10 jobs are gone. Only three jobs are left. So until or unless you upgrade yourself, you will not be in the job. Only three kinds of jobs are going to be left in the country today. They are of the specialists, the people who manage, the persons who manage people, and the third is creative jobs. Only three kinds of jobs will be left, so you have to upgrade yourself. The world is talking about talking computers, making talking computers, and they are finding the language, which language should be used. They have zeroed in on the language, which is Sanskrit. And Sanskrit language, now government is also making it compulsory for everybody. And uh, let me tell you, this country, we have walked a long path, a long way for education. This study was done recently by the Ernest and Young, uh, along with Vicky also. So students, be a part of making computers, learn Sanskrit, and uh, I would end this with an equation being a mathematician, and that is also, in fact, it is the vision of the Prime Minister Modi ji, which is IT plus IT is equal to IT. I repeat, IT plus IT is equal to IT. IT is information technology plus Indian talent. Information technology plus Indian talent is equal to India tomorrow. All the best. Right. Uh, thank you, Man, for sharing your words with all of us. Yes, there is an important role of ICT in New India Vision. 
Now request Honorable Vice Chairman ITS Education Group, Shri Arpi Chadasa, to present memento to our eminent guest, Shri Anil Sarupji, as a token of remembrance. Thank you, sir. Now request Director IT, Dr. Sunil Kumar Pandey, sir, to present memento to our eminent guest, Dr. Harish Pant, as a token of remembrance. Thank you, sir. Now request Vice Chairman ITS Education Group Shri Arpi Chadha, sir, to present memento to our eminent guest, Dr. Kumkum Devan, as a token of regard. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Now request Director IT and Event Chair of the Summit, Dr. Sunil Kumar Pandey, sir, to deliver a vote of thanks. Thank you very much, Professor Pujadhar. Uh, now we are on the verge of completion of this uh, inaugural session of ITC ICT Summit 2017, which have been kept consciously on the theme New India Vision, ICT in Nation Building. In fact, this session, which is started with the focus on productivity and how ICT is contributing in improving the productivity which was focused by Sri Maharaj Dubeji. Then, uh, of course, different issues which were uh, pointed out by Dr. Harish Pansa, like content explosion. In 1930, there was a survey when people tried to understand that globally data available, how much time it will take to double. In 1930, it was found, rather it was researched that it will take 70 years that total data on across the globe will be doubled in 70 years. And now it is predicted that by 2020, the total amount of, if we convert all the movies in gigabyte, in GB, all the movies make till 2022, if combine all gigabytes, and that particular size, if you take that volume, that volume will increase after every two hours. That's the kind of era we are heading towards. So very pertinent point uh, raised by Dr. Harish Pansab. Then he pointed out about the technology convergence, that now we are in the era of disruption of technology. If we look back, we will find there is a sequence, there is a relation between development of technology from diode to transistors to ICs to VLS and so on. But now the technology is changing without any order. Unorderly technology change that is disruptive technology and which is leading to foundation for creation of an application which will think on behalf of you. And Google is working on a research project uh, sir, where uh, they are claiming that once that product is launched, you will wear a, go a glass on your eyes and you will find what the person who is standing be before you, what he is thinking, what is going in his mind. That's the, that's the destination we are heading towards. Then, of course, uh, Anil Sarup, sir, every time when we listen to him, we see a different perspective altogether. The kind of contribution he has made to the country by making the systems transparent and people accountable, those who are behind those systems, that service this country will, those in his beginning, sir, said that I'm about to retire. He may be retired officially, but his, his contributions are going to be there till we are there. So thank you very much, sir, for, your, uh, for accepting our invitation. I understand that the kind of busy schedule you have, it's very difficult to catch you, but whenever we have requested, you have always been there, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Then Dr. Kumkum Diwan, ma'am, of course, as an academician, as a researcher, we have always uh, read you, and uh, that was reflected during, his talk, uh, during her talk also. The people, those who are in country, we are using 4G. And it is a survey which was published in June 2017 that 60% of us who are having smartphones, we access 4G. And 60% of Indian population, you understand what the number is going to be. This is by adding the population of almost 50 countries, it will come like that. But then the challenge is 
that in spite of having those 4G connections of 60% of entire smartphone users, still we are placed at 74th position by, uh, in June 2017. Out of 75 countries having 4G connectivity, we are at 74th position because of poor connectivity and poor broadband services available here. So lots of things have to be done. But the hope of light is that by 12th November, just three, four days back, we have got around 4,50,000 gram panchayats in our country. On 12th November 2017, which was data which was released by the ministry, that 76,306 gram panchayats have been connected by broadband. And 1,6,000 almost, approximately 1,6,000 villages have got their optical fiber cabling laid down. And it is expected by December end, our over 1 lakh gram panchayats are going to be connected through broadband. And by 2020, this entire 4 lakh gram panchayats are going to be there. So the, this shows a path for, of hope that our country is actually moving towards this achieving the new India vision, which have been propounded by our uh, Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji. And each of us has to play our role. Each of us has to contribute in our own capacity. And I'm sure that this Sir, Sri Anil Suh, Sir, the concern what he has shown, each of us are going to be focused, engaged, and entertain ourselves in such a way that our engagement contributes a bit in our own capacity in the growth of the nation. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, sir. Now request all the dignitaries, guests, delegates, and students to please stand for the national anthem. Janagana mana adhinayaka jaya hai Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Uttkala Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Jalati Taranga Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Aashish Maage Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Jana Gana Mangala Dayaka Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Thank you all.